Master, you're muted. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. Okay, yeah, so welcome back. And um, uh, hope you have your cup of coffee with you as we go on for the next uh, uh, 45 minutes. Okay, so as what we what we looked into uh, quickly a brief about um, how as a result of the fall the attributes that uh, uh, that we had became needs and we were looking at the way um, what, what are these needs and how they divided they're divided into uh, casual needs we looked at critical needs and we're going to be looking at crucial needs and all of us like we like we said our image bearers what does it mean our image bearers mean that we function we function in particular way for a better understanding we said there are five areas of the way we function and whenever there are needs that come they become strong motivators and we're looking at what these needs are so we, we looked at uh, uh, casual needs casual needs are those kind of needs that really don't bring about too much of a distress to us the uh, uh, the critical needs are those that bring about some form of distress but however life tends to uh, you know life does tend to go on even when those kind of needs are there the crucial needs are what we see um, you know i think the diagram also in itself explains how they are the most basic <clears throat> and the profound longings of the human heart it is those desires that um, that we feel must be met if life needs to be worth living so nothing we see can can uh, fill that core except what we are designed to experience so there is the core Mm, longings and needs that we have and nothing can satisfy these crucial uh, needs except the kind of relationship which God offers. Um, so what would this mean? When, uh, you know, those needs, now I'm going back to those attributes, those needs of self-worth, of security, of significance. When these needs get unmet, it can tend to crumble us, right? I'll give you examples of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of these needs. Let's say a person who is going through a divorce, right? Uh, in whatever circumstance that they, they have, what do you think gets affected? These parts, the crucial needs, the sense of security, the sense of purpose, or the sense of worth that they feel. Think about someone who loses a loved one. What do they sense? A, a, a sense of, um, of, of no purpose, no meaning, right? Or, or the sense that they feel alone, they feel isolated. And, uh, and, and the sense of not feeling in a place of belonging. So nothing so when when we understand as a believer when we understand when we look at this we know that we go through these emotions we go through these profound longings even when even as believers when there is an argument with somebody or when there is a fight that happens or when there is a loss of something let's say a loss of job you know you, you a person has been to a job regularly and suddenly one day one morning they are fired they are they are sent off from their employment suddenly there's a feeling of a question of who they are what their value is what their self-worth is where is their security or let's say you know when there is amounts of money that are lost or possessions that are lost there is a question that comes so do you do you see that when these needs go unmet we experience spiritual, emotional, and psychological problems. So these, what are these crucial longings? The need for love or the need for worth, the need for security, and the need for significance. The same attributes that God uh, gave us prior to the fall that made man, had those attributes that God put into man became those crucial needs for us. So even even when you look back at your own life right different situations that happen maybe it's a simple 
um, maybe a, a, an argument with some member of your family. There is that that the questions, you know, the self doubt begins of okay, am I really loved? Am I valued in this relationship? If this happens, and then there begins a worry. If something happens, what's going to happen to me? What is going to be the meaning of my life? You you see, so all of this is what we look at and 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 uh, uh, bring under the the banner of those crucial longings or the crucial needs that people have. And when these needs go unmet is when people go through emotional problems, people go through psychological problems, people go through spiritual problems. And that is what we need to restore. Okay, so security, significance, worth. Um, so, you know, these things you find in your relationship with people as you grow up, because that becomes like a window of God's love to you. But you know, as as children or as 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 you grow up, you realize that even the relationship that you have had with your parents or with your spouse or with your child cannot be perfect as your relationship with your heavenly Father. And so, until we bring people, so what does it mean to restore people back into God's image through counseling? is to make them feel that sense of security, sense of worth, sense of significance in their relationship with Christ Jesus. Okay, let me give you just an example so that this makes it a little bit more clearer. Okay, so uh, let's look at this example and we, we'll try and unpack this through a, uh, through a case and uh, let, let's, so we're just going to make certain deductions over here, okay? So we're, we're looking at Miss S, who's a young woman. She's striving for excellence in all that she does. As a child, her parents always rewarded her for being first in class. They showed their displeasure at any failure on her part. As she grew up, her primary goal in everything was to be ahead. In her new workplace, she began to face tough competition and soon began to question her adequacy and her importance. What do you think are her needs? So I'm going to open this up for a, for a small discussion. What do you think uh, are her needs and what do you see is some of the origin or sources of where she's at right now? Yeah. So what do you think are her needs? Uh, I think self-worth. Okay. Self-worth. Okay. What 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 challenges her self-worth here? Mm, maybe the image that she has about herself is not really right. I okay. Mean, okay. She so, always so that yeah. go go ahead. Go ahead. Shall we start? Hey. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, she always thought about being first. She never was in any competition. Okay. Now when she suddenly faces this, it's it yes. uh, makes her to uh, think like, what is my worth? <laughs> right, absolutely. Uh, so yeah. if you look at this, you will find that her acceptance by her parents. So remember, as a child, when you grow up, the first window to... All of this comes from your closed people who you relate with, right? Either your family or your parents or uh, people who, who groom you. I'll, I'll take the question. Okay, you said significance. Okay, yeah, yeah, significance, right. So uh, this, this becomes, um, uh, sorry, where was that? Yeah, the acceptance that a person has comes initially from the part of parents, right? Because um, that's, that's the first window to any relationship. Now, if you look at this young lady's case, her acceptance by her parents was based on something. What is it based on? What is it based on? She was, accepted, uh, she was accepted when she became first in class, based yeah, on yeah. her performance, right? So only if she performed well, does she have self-worth. So she has built a connection like that. But if I need to feel a sense of worth or a sense of value, then I need to be the topper or I need to be uh, performing well. My behavior should be striving for the best in all of things. If I don't get the best, then there's something wrong with me, right? Now, this is, this is what 
has grown through her. So the so what happens is the self worth and her value becomes challenged in the face of the competition at the office, right? So the so so she soon begins to question her adequacy and importance because there may be people who are better than her, which makes her feel that there is something wrong with me or I do not have that sense of value. So her feelings of inadequacy and self-worth is affected. She's not able to find purpose because for her, the significance and meaning and purpose of life is that I must come ahead. Only if I am on the top is that I'm of, of a certain value. Okay, there is there is uh, the, the acceptance that the family gave her was conditional, right? So it is in condition to something. Only if you do this are you secure. And so there was, and what was the need that she had? There was a need to feel worth. There was a need to feel value. There was a need to feel purpose and meaning outside of this. Okay, so this becomes her needs so if we were to you know go a little ahead and kind of suppose what could be problems this young person could have gone through is probably she she loses her sleep right so remember it's affecting her physical functioning right she loses her appetite she it's affecting her physical functioning remember you remember the five functioning we talked about so how does this affect how do these uh, 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 crucial needs affect the areas of functioning so it affects her uh, physical health she she doesn't sleep she doesn't eat so probably as a result of that she may you know she may be she may be losing weight or she may be binge eating or she may be having a certain stress related disorders so that affects the physical functioning so as a result of this this what she's going through she feels emotionally sad she's probably depressed or she's anxious, she feels underconfident because whenever she is going maybe to a meeting and she sees other competitors around, there is this, this, this feeling of, uh, of uh, anxiety or this feeling of fear whether she's going to perform or not. Do you see that it is all there within, but it surfaces out in the different areas of functioning? Or let's say in her rational thinking, that's the third part that we said, you know, her rational thinking. She can't think right. She's not able, she's she's looking at how to improve maybe some skills. So she may be going for a couple of courses or she may be sitting into the night trying to figure out a way how to work through this. She may be using some kinds of other means to find out uh, maybe some, you know, some ways of working through this competition. So you see the rational rational part of it begins to think of all sorts of ways to uh, to work through this or she may decide to just leave the company she says okay this is not working uh, she she may be thinking about how everybody is unfair of how people are um, uh, making use of her or how the management is uh, um, is not a good management so you do so you do so you see that the rational part of her becomes a lot more affected she's not able to think straight volitional the way that she makes choices she may just um, uh, probably decide something impulsively right she makes certain choices maybe she says okay i'm feeling so uh, so overwhelmed maybe you know and and probably that's when she may get into some form of addiction to calm down the kind of emotional responses she's feeling the kind of uh, uh, effect that she's she's sensing in her heart you know so the sense of depression or or this this uh, feeling of lack of self-worth she may want to forget it and as a result she decides and she says okay I, I, i'll go have a drink or you know i just i i'll just uh, numb the pain by getting into something that is that will that will show me something and she may get into certain activities or certain relationships that aren't helpful okay so that affects the volitional part and the last is the spiritual part the very fact that she senses that this worth the self-worth has to be found outside her dependency on God itself puts her away in her spiritual um, uh, connection with God. She may begin to question who God is. She may begin to blame who God is. So do you see that these crucial needs affect the different areas of her functioning? And often psychological problems comes as a result of the, of the fact that these crucial needs of self-worth, 
of security and of significant significance is becomes a motivation to find outside of God, of their relationship with God. Now, you and I as believers know, outside of our relationship with God, these three can never be met. It can never be fulfilled in the entirety of the way God can fulfill with us, right? And I'm, and I'm sure we all understand that, that sense of self worth. That is why, um, you know, when we are in, intim in an intimate relationship with God, no matter what happens in our surrounding, whether it be a problem in our physical bodies, whether it be a problem in our relationships, whether it be an issue in our jobs, whether it be an issue in, in our material possessions, whether it be a uh, 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 an issue in, in maybe some part of our work or purposes being, being um, uh, bought down, if we are able to build our foundation on knowing that only the Lord, only in our relationship with Lord, these three needs are completely met. Why? Because that's what how we were originally designed. They were attributes. But because of the fall of man, it became needs. And man tries to attempt to fulfill those needs apart from their dependency of God. All right. Is this clear? Is is this part of it understandable? Have you all got this? Because like, like I said, this is extremely crucial when you are meeting people and when you're looking at them, uh, when they are talking about something that may that may be almost, you know, like, like think think of, um, you know, when you help people, when you're trying to explore into their life, look at them like you look at an onion. OK, what is presented on the outside is only what you can see, but it is to go deeper into this place of what of your crucial needs or what need has gone unmet, because only then can we help people understand that it is because of their need for self-worth or their need for security or they need for significance is why that they're running after something that's causing them these psychological problems. Okay. Now, maybe just one more example. And then, uh, you know, just maybe two, three minutes just to hear any questions. Let's take a, a, a real case scenario of um, a couple together. All right. Where one of them chooses to get into maybe let's say a, a, an extramarital affair. Okay. Now, I'm not looking at believer, unbeliever. I'm just talking about a specific situation. All right. Now, in counseling, we could go about dealing with the issue on the surface, right? By, uh, you know, in different ways. Like when you're giving advice and saying, okay, this is not the right thing to do, you know, which is true. These are all true. This is, this is right. But in order to meet the person at their point of need, we need to ensure that we peel them like an onion. So, you know, the persons come to you and you're, you're, you're helping them and, and, you know, they begin to realize and say, yeah, I know that I should not be um, uh, in this relationship. They know that, right? But that's not the only point of help that we give them. We get them to a place where they are able to see where is this coming from? What is the source of this expression that has come about right so uh, to in order to do that bringing them explore now this you you may you know it it may seem easy to say okay uh you know mrs so and so uh, you're you know you don't have any self-worth you don't have security and that's why in your relationship or you feel that's not what you get from your marriage and you're going to mr x Right. But instead of Mr. X, you should be going to God. That is the truth. That is the truth. But in order for them to experience it and feel it, they need to come to a place of realization, to come to a place of exploring and saying, yes, I feel a sense of lack of worth. I feel a sense. I feel a sense uh, of no security. And I feel that my husband is the one who can give me this. And because he can't give me this, I choose somebody else to give me this. 
right? And in her mind, in her appearance, she may think this is what it's giving, but it's creating a lot of problems. It's creating a lack of sleep. It's creating interpersonal problems. And so why isn't she able to meet those core needs in this way that she's found? Because in all of this, we understand as we look at man and their problems, every need can only be met by their relationship in God right and we bring them to an understanding of why there is a problem such as this what is it that takes them to run after something to run after money to run after uh, fame to run after somebody else to run after uh, promiscuous relationships so that is the place what counseling is meant to do and this is not by telling them but bringing them to a place of realization as we go through um, you know our our conversations with them. Okay. All right. Um, I'm stopping here. Any any question? Is there any question that you all would like to bring about? Um, hi, Paul. So one of the yes. things I wanted to ask is, um, uh, first of all, do we um, step in unless they ask uh, if, let's say, the last example you mentioned, the family who is um, you know, one person in the family is looking for um, extra mental health, you know, trying, you know, trying to find their needs met in another person. So if we get to know through different sources, or let's say some third person is informing us as a minister or as a leader, so do we uh, step in at that moment or do we really have to wait for him to or her to come and discuss this matter? Okay, so I would answer this specifically in two ways. So um, we, some of us may also be holding a pastoral role, right? And uh, there may be some of us who hold only a, a role of a counselor. Some may be holding both, okay? Now, as a pastor, um, there, there is something that comes up to you. Um, it is, it's, it's important that we we gently need to bring it up to whoever the person may be concerned all right and to do that is to help them to maybe see something that they're not seeing all right so that's that's one thing when I, as i'm saying as a pastor yes if someone comes in and tells me something about somebody and they have given me like like for example let's say whoever mm -hmm. you know one of the spouses come and say this is what's happening I need their permission to approach the situation, all right? Because sometimes they, they are also here for some reason. So I, I, that's one thing I will want to find out. If you told me this, as a pastor, if you've told me this, uh, you need to also give me permission to at least broach the topic up. Now, if he says, no, 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 don't, don't tell my spouse none of it, then, you know, that's as much as where it lies. You may not be able to go further, right? Because this is all done in respect. It's all done taking care that things don't mm, tumble off, right? So you do, do it with respect. You do it with the permission of the other spouse, okay? But let's say that they have given you the permission. It is good to uh, to, to meet with them. Now, I'm talking about, uh, so that's one part of it when you're looking at it as a person. Now, let's say as, as a counselor, that's not something I would do because maybe a person who shared it with me has shared it with me in absolute confidentiality, right? And I cannot breach that confidentiality, but I can help them to suggest to the person to come and speak to me. I can do that, all right? So I think it really matters with wisdom, the role that you play, and how you proceed in something like that. So if it is a spouse who's come to you, gives you the permission, you are more than, uh, you know, you could you could do that. Nevertheless, if let's say the person decides and says, you know, pastor, please stay out of it, and I'll figure this out, then that's as much as you can do it. Then you work with the, with the, with the other partner, with the other spouse, you work with them. Right? But as a counselor, that's something I'd be very careful not to do because of this fact of confidentiality. I have to be careful of how I proceed further. I, I would generally get the other person who or who's talking to me to go suggest to have the and, and that's what would would most likely be be useful and be productive. I hope I yeah, answered your yeah, question. Yeah, that, that really helps. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and just to yeah. add to uh, this, let's say um, if a third person is informing, let's say uh, not uh, somebody from the uh, family, but somebody maybe close to them. But we, for us, there is a third person. It's not husband. It's not wife. Uh, it's a third person, and uh, this person is also um, sharing in confidence and. um we also get to see so this is other part of it we also get to see visibly that there are few things uh okay then we try to connect the dots and we understand this is the issue but then also we don't have enough proof say one example mm-hmm. let's say you know one of the spouses if they are posting certain whatsapp status or something like that uh, in connection with this but when we get to hear from the third person we understand oh this was the issue um mm-hmm. so uh, uh, i'm just trying to understand because it's a very practical scenario for us here um, yeah, yeah. so do we uh, then do we ask anything or or we can just tell them hey, if if you feel like talking let us know or things like that uh, mm. how, how do so, we handle so the best thing to do if it's a third person keep what they have told you confidentially you shouldn't make a reference to them um uh, but out of your Uh, out of your role as a pastor um you can go back to the maybe one of the persons have a private individual discussion with them to know to give them what you're observing or what you're noticing and uh, invite them for a conversation rather than making a judgment and saying okay i saw these two three things and it looks like this is this way rather than that saying that i'm concerned that um something is going wrong and but i and i i wanted to hear from you before anything else and as a result is why you are approaching them so keep it a one on one keep it confidential keep it respectful keep it non judgmental keep it open and keep it confidential so that the third person is not bought into the whole conversation as such yes sir yeah yeah thanks okay okay yeah. I think uh, Divya also posed a question. Okay, is it possible for a person to have a distorted sense of the three crucial needs, probably caused by manipulation of another? Absolutely. So uh, you know, if if you look at uh, a lot of people um, who do not understand, who do not know, and I would say this even about maybe believers who do not understand that their value. the security significance comes from god that in itself uh, seems distorted in itself right so i have um teen number of times when when i have spoken to people uh, it it's almost like a light bulb when uh, when when they discuss and then they realize that the very fact that they have held on to something either like a job or a relationship or a performance as an identity marker they like okay if that doesn't become my identity what becomes my identity so it's so that they are so um blinded to the fact that there are things in the world that marks these three needs right and i i've seen it happen almost every other time when when they come into a discussion and say okay i never thought i thought my wife was the one who gives me uh, this identity i mean i recently had a, a a person who i was helping his wife walked out on him she had a divorce and walked out on him he was so broken because every he did everything keeping her in mind whether it was um, building a house or whether it was planning for the future whether it was doing something for the children in his belief that if he does this there is some sense of security he feels the minute she walked out he began to question life and its existence completely so much so much so that he was you know he was on the brink of a suicide but it was this understanding that self that all of this is not attached to um to to things right it's it's dependency on something else that makes them feel that uh, uh, life is worth living but to come to that place that i my security my significance my worth 
comes from a god comes from the god of all creation now to bring them to that point is where you you bring them to to the gospel you know so the idea is to bring people to that point where they feel and they know that there isn't any place that they can look to apart from god above now remember this it seems very simple but this is where you know you will have people saying they will go into uh, you know all sorts of practices that gives them the feeling that they are they are they are reaching where they where they are you know even this thing of um philanthropic activities you know doing things for for the poor doing things for people who are uh, underprivileged makes them feel a sense of acceptance about who they are right so there are people who who see that but they begin to find it again in other places you know doing something it, it's it's out of an act it's out of some kind of uh, acts that they do you know if you do this then you work if you if you do meditation this is an, if you do this form of an exercise you have so it's again a place of self dependency that you know i can find it within me and that i think is the biggest difference between uh secular field and christian uh um, in, in christian practice of helping that everything is at the end based on your um exalting of yourself of learning how to increase yourself right you you learn how to be happy in yourself you be you whatever you do you know you can find the joy it's all about self it's not centered on god so yes there it it can be absolutely uh, there can be places where it can be manipulated yes yeah thank thank you ma'am i just had a, a like a follow up actually mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. this can come like one is self deception like we are mm -hmm. trying to find these uh, to be satisfied in other things mm -hmm. apart from God, uh, right. but other can be you know continued you know manipulation like a brainwashing. Each time uh, a person gets to understand, but um, uh, the real uh, sense of purpose and self worth everything is from god but again you know there is uh, if there is a continued manipulation of their uh, how they think and how they reason um, it's it's kind of hard to mm. uh, to bring them again and again mm. right back to that to that mm. uh, real uh, real uh, you know cause and uh, to bring them back to where they should be looking for solution mm -hmm. that that's exactly why is where um, how how do we work through that is only in our intimate relationship in knowing who god is and what god has created us to be and that's why the word is so important because you know look back at our own lives you spend say a few days without being aware of the word and god's presence in our lives you know it's it doesn't take you too long to begin to self doubt yourself you know, begin to see yourself as uh, as you know i i need to find some place in where i am it isn't long because we are far away from the truth but but it's the truth that sets us free so keeping on understanding what the truth of god's word is in order to meet our crucial needs is vital in keeping us what do i say aligned to this because the minute we we um question this or we are not in a place of constantly uh, seeking god and being in that relationship with god these are the three things that get attacked you know and uh, and and that's a reflection of for me i personally begin to see whenever i have um you know when something comes about and i have lost that focus i know how much of of groundwork that i've missed and that becomes a huge reflection for us so that's why the word is important declaring and knowing what the truth of god is what the truth of the cross has uh, has done for us that's why it is so important Mm -hmm. yeah yeah totally agree totally agree yeah yeah but it it can it is applicable only for a, for a believer right it is yeah, absolutely yeah. absolutely you're right it's applicable only for a believer you're right yeah mm -hmm.
Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll move ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll move ahead. Um, yeah. So what? So just just to quickly summarize, we said that these crucial needs become strong motivators because everyone, all of man, longs for these crucial needs to be met. Okay. So they long for something, and we are controlled by what we long for. And um, uh, so, yeah, we're controlled by what we long for. And any of this crucial longing that is not satisfied is what leads us to psychological, behavioral, or uh, um, other kinds of problems. OK, so uh, again, just back in relation to what we were looking at, God has designed us in such a way that we can functionally, um, that we can only function if we stand on these three things that he gives us, self-worth, security, and significance. So we are spiritual beings, and all of us have deep longings and needs, and these are strongly, uh, we, we are strongly led to meet them to the extent that if these go unmet, people will experience problems. They go after things in order to receive, to, to get this part of it, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm just, these are just some more examples, which um, it's just for us to understand. Okay, let's, we'll, we'll just have, uh, uh, just a quick to know whether they're casual, critical, or crucial needs, okay? So imagine a scenario where you are a victim of an earthquake, where you have lost everything you owned, your house, bank balance, assets, even the closest people you call your own. What have you lost? What do you think you've lost? Security? Yes, absolutely. OK, so uh, this example is to show the need for security. So in the physical realm, you know, if, if this you lose everything, you have lost everything that you belonged to. Similarly, in the spiritual realm, because of the fall, we as people go about looking for a sense of belonging in things and people that do not hold any true basis. So we are let down every time we attach ourselves to some form of security other than God. OK. All right, good. So let's look at, uh, uh, OK, um, so we'll move through just to, I'm just trying to see if we need to focus on this. Um, OK, um, I think I'll, I'll go ahead with this. Uh, we've spoken about all of this. OK, so just to quickly retrack um, about what we said about those five uh, five parts of our uh, of our functioning. This is important for us to just, just quickly focus on um, in order to understand problems, OK? So in order to understand why problems begin in the person's life, we need to examine these five areas of functioning. So like we said, God has given us a body uh, in which in which uh, the, the spirit and the soul can be effectively expressed. So uh, um, remember that the body is also prone to dysfunction and disease, right? So anything that disturbs our thought, our emotion and will can also have an effect on the body. Now, um, we've got to be careful. Now, remember I told you, whenever we deal with a person, we deal with them like we deal with an onion, right? So let's say someone who's coming to you who's depressed. So one of the contributing factors of depression also is if, if you do have certain uh, physical illnesses, like, for example, thyroid, you could have depression, right? So we've got to be careful not to prejudge a person and say, you know, you have depression, maybe you have uh, your all your crucial needs are not met, you know, your self-worth and your significance and your uh, security is all uh, not met, and that's why you have depression. For all you know, it's probably they have thyroid, and as a result, they're feeling depressed. So they may need to go through a physical checkup and figure that out. So, whenever you meet a person, you need to you need to look at them in all of these five areas of functioning. Don't go into the mistake of saying all prob every problem that a person presents with is only spiritual in nature. It could be in the in the other areas of nature. Only when you go down to the depth or the core of the issue would you be able to understand? So 
it's important to know that physically when, when, when someone comes to you, check about how they are physically. You know, are they resting well? Are they eating well? Are they sleeping well? Are they exercising? Uh, you know, what are the kind of physical conditions that they may be having? So ensure that uh, you know, you're systematic in the way that you that you help people, right? Whether they have gone to meet with a doctor to to find out whatever is issued, so that that in itself helps. You know, the physical being of them is something that you need to consider. Once you've marked off that and said, okay, checklist, this seems okay. Physically, they seem okay. It doesn't seem to be contributing to their core problem, right? Then you move into the to the to into into the next part of it or into the next area of it which is the emotional being this is where uh, what what are you doing here in this emotional the emotional part of their functioning so um first foremost we understand that we are emotional beings and uh, uh, as a result it plays a huge role in making our lives meaningful so what we need to ensure is to when someone comes again when someone comes to you, don't jump the gun and move straight away into the core spiritual needs. They are coming with you with, with a huge problem. They are crying their heart out. Uh, and you may have got this understanding, say, okay, their problem is because they don't feel loved. Okay, hold on. They're experiencing some emotions. Help them to go through in expressing those emotions. They need to come to a place of being able to bring about what their emotions are. OK, and they they need to have a sense that you have also heard what their emotions are. So sometimes people experience emotions, um, which which what we call as signal emotions. Uh, I think it's there on the slide. One second. Yeah. Yeah. So, signal emotions. Now, what are these? What, what do we mean by signal emotions? Now, signal emotions are sometimes when we have wrong goals, they jeopardize our emotions and it it and it becomes like a malfunction. They are often usually compounded when when we refuse to face and feel what is happening. So when we look at emotions, there are positive emotions. There are negative emotions. So positive emotions are those where we have love, joy, peace, uh, kindness. Negative emotions are those that where you may have anger, fear, sorrow, uh, shame, guilt, confusion, emptiness. So in counseling, the counselor needs to acknowledge and help the counselee face and deal with these negative emotions. You cannot tell them and say, you can't feel like this. You can't feel anger. You can't feel shame. You can't feel guilt because that is a very real part of them. OK, so uh, you, what we're looking at, why is it that it's important for us to see how they're feeling is because some of these emotions, like let's say anger or resentment, may have a certain goal that may be wrong, right? Uh, maybe we, the goal that we believe is that we must feel good about ourselves because somebody has blocked something or uh, you know has done something outside of us so the emotional reaction comes up okay the goal often like for example let's say the wife thinking that uh, 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 sorry the, the a person thinking that worth comes only from a career or from earning an uh, earning an income and what happens when when the person is denied maybe to get into a job by her husband then she becomes angry she becomes uh, resentful because there is an undermined goal. Her goal is to feel good worth or feel worth about herself. So without really helping the counselee to, to express these emotions or come in terms with these emotions, we cannot move into the deeper phase of what they are going through. So these emotions of all, all of these signal emotions that come about is important for a counsellor to help them process, to help them live through, to help them understand and, and figure out, because only then can we get into further roots of the issue. Okay. Next is the rational being of understanding them as rational people. Now, rational, what is ra rational uh, being is the way the person thinks. You would see this in Proverbs. It says, as a man thinks, uh, so is he, right? A man thinks in his heart, so so is he. So uh, what did sin do to the mind? It exchanged every truth for a lie, right? So what is a lie? It says, 
you can become a very fulfilled person if you act independently of God. That's that's exactly what Eve uh, did, right? I can do things independently of God. And because of the fall, our thinking has been influenced that we can make life work without God. So we believe things that are untrue, uh, in, in especially in particular about how we can become secure and significant and um, have self-worth. And these beliefs play a role in what we believe. So we, we say, okay, you know, God, I, I can't feel the love of God here. So maybe, you know, I, I could get into something else that will help me feel loved. So our thinking also becomes distorted. And while you're helping, a, uh, while you're counseling a person, you're actually bringing to the surface these belief systems that they may be having. These belief systems about what they think um, uh, is the solution to their problem. Right. So they may be thinking, OK, maybe if uh, I, I don't feel the sense of security and as a result, I must do this because, you know, God doesn't seem God is absent here. God's not doing anything. I have to figure out a way. All right. So remember, that's what sin did. It exchanged every truth for a lie. And it, it makes the person feel that you can fulfill the desires outside of God. So that's why when you're talking to a person, you need to come to a place of getting to understand what are their belief systems? What are their thinking patterns that lead them to, to, to go ahead or to think the way that they do or to behave the way that they do? The next one is the volitional being. When, you, when we're looking at volitional being, what are we saying? Uh, that is, God has given man the power to will, to choose and move in a certain direction, right? So uh, what are we helping to see? All because of the thoughts that we think, like the rational, we've looked at the rational being, with the thoughts that we think we make certain choices, okay? And so in counseling, what are you helping them to do is to weigh their choices, is to say, okay, if you do this, what do you think can happen? If you do this, what do you think can happen? If you do this, how does it make you feel? What sense of purpose do you think it's going to create for you? Are you happy with that purpose? So you need to come to a place where you're helping them think about their choices, giving them the place where uh, they know the right move, movement to go in. Okay, and lastly, of course, is the spiritual spiritual part of it, where we said in order to understand the problems, where it begins from, we look at it, these three. Everyone has these strong spiritual needs of security, self worth, and significance. And if, like we said, if it goes unmet, that's how problems come. So when we are dealing with people, when we are looking at people, that's exactly what we are what we are doing. We are getting them. To, we're looking at them like an onion. We peel it down to a place to find out where are these problems and these issues coming about. Okay. Uh, just quickly go into this part as well. Okay. So when you look at the five areas of functioning, what are we looking at is that we see that problems arise within the uh, within our personality because of our unsatisfied deep longings, because of our wrong thinking. Because, because of our wrong goals or unrecognized goals, because of our emotions, um, sometimes that are not acknowledged, maybe the anger and the resentment is not acknowledged. And as a result, these are all that functions deep within. So how do we proceed through these five circles of functioning physically? Like I said, we determine if there are any physical problems that's contributing to the counselee's difficulties. Emotional, we tune in to their emotions, help them acknowledge that they have those negative emotions and help them to identify those problem emotions. Then volitional, we help them to examine the behavior and you know how their behavior is and ascertain the goal that lies where. Why are they doing what they're doing? What, what goal is it that they are driving at? Rational, how can they identify the wrong beliefs that's there in them and the wrong strategies that's underlining their problem. And lastly is spiritual to assist them. What is their deep thirst? Their deep thirst is to have the sense of, of worth, significance and um, uh, value in the eyes in the eyes of God. OK, so lastly, how do we restore people back into their image? OK, so what are you doing when you're able to connect them back? connect their spirits back to God and help them see that 
their security, their significance, their worth comes only from God. That's where you're working with God to restore their image. Because when their image is restored, when the depth of their needs are restored, the other things begin to change. When they begin to see that God is the one who meets them at every point of need, they are more careful of not running behind things in order to meet that, that need. And that's what you would. And that's what counseling is all about, is to help them restore them back to, their, to, to the image um, of God. Okay? All right. Okay, I think I went like a train. That was, that was pretty quick. Okay, uh, any questions up till up um, till here? Any questions? Any thoughts? Any questions? We're short up two minutes above time, but nevertheless, any questions? None. None at all. Okay, so what I'd like you all to do is please go back to the to the material, kindly read the material, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some questions definitely because this is not an easy chapter that we take. In fact, we take at least some two, three hours, but because of the uh, paucity of time, we've just kept it for two classes. Usually I take around four classes for this, but go back, read the material, come back with any thoughts or questions. Okay. Uh, I think this, it, it just, this is so helpful because it helps us really dig deep, right? Why are we in certain situations or in problems or difficult mental states? If we get some of this understanding right about how God is the only one who can meet any point of our needs, we begin to see life with more gratitude. We begin to see life in the way that he sees it. And we want to desire more of him so that we, we sense that security and that significance from him. Okay, great. Shall we close with a word of prayer? Can I request one of you to please close in prayer, please? Anybody? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for the class that we have. God, we thank you for creating us in your image, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful people around us. We thank you that we are learning about uh, how to help them find you, how to help them uh, to restore back in this life, Lord, even after the world has fallen. God, help us to understand more about this. Uh, help us to uh, reach out and help people because that's what we are called to do down here on this earth. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. God bless. We will meet next week. God bless Thank you, you all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. I'm Thank you. God bless.